All right. Previously, we had uh, discussed diffusion, which is exclusively referring to the movement of solutes down the gradient. Um, now we're going to talk about osmosis, which is referring to only the movement of water. So we're interested in how water is moving across the membrane. Um, osmosis is water moving down its concentration gradient. Water moves to where there is less water, whether that is inside or outside of the cell. So looking at some vocabulary relating to osmosis, hypotonic and hypertonic, these words are both adjectives that describe solutions. So hypotonic describes a solution whose solute concentration is less than the other side of the membrane. So by other side of the membrane, we're talking about either inside or outside of the cell. Those are the two sides of the membrane, in or out of the cell. A hypertonic solution is one whose solute concentration is higher than the other side of the membrane. So hypertonic, think hyper, lots of activity, hyperactive, so more than. Hypotonic, hypo, I think low, less than. So these are adjectives that describe the solute concentration of a solution. Uh, just looking at a very simplified diagram, which side would you consider hypotonic and hypertonic? Um, the line in the middle is supposed to represent a selectively permeable membrane, so only certain molecules can fit through. Um, and that, again, mi mimics the phospholipid bilayer of, of the cell. Hypo is less than, so hypotonic would be on the left. Hypertonic would be on the right. So if we are describing these two adjoining regions, the solution on the left would be considered hypotonic because it has a lower solute concentration when compared to the other side of the membrane. The right side is hypertonic. It has a greater solute concentration when compared to the other side. So looking at an example, which way will water move? And more importantly, why? Um, looking at the zoomed in uh, membrane here, it is again selectively permeable. So in this example, the red molecules represent water, and water is able to fit through the membrane, no problem. The larger molecules would represent the solutes, so we could say that this is a sugar, we could say it's glucose or sucrose, but we're just going to call it the solute, and Clearly, it is too big to fit through the membrane. It cannot pass through, so whichever side of the membrane uh, the solute is on is where it will remain, because it cannot fit through the membrane. So the red represents the water, which you don't really see in the big picture here. Um, all you're seeing are the solutes in purple. So the first, the first step is to determine which side is hypotonic and which side is hypertonic. Okay. So if we look at the before, this side, when compared to the right side of the U-shaped tube, I would say that the left side is hypotonic compared to the right side. The right side is hypertonic. Clearly, the right side has a greater solute concentration than the adjoining region. And so we're simply describing the solute concentrations on either side of the membrane. So we said that hypo means uh, less solutes. So we could say, again, if we're talking about a sugar, we could say it's less glucose or sucrose. But hypotonic, by definition, means a lower concentration of solutes. And hypertonic is going to mean a greater concentration of solutes. So with that being said, if you have a lower concentration of solutes, you therefore will have a greater concentration of water. And you can look at the picture and actually see, you can see more blue on the left of the U-shaped tube. Um, the blue represents the water. The purple represents the solutes. So wherever there are less solutes, there will always be more water. Wherever there are more solutes in the hypertonic, there will always be less water. 
and look at the picture, you, you physically see less blue on the right side of the U-shaped tube. Okay, so hypo and hyper are referring to the solute concentration. You have to make the inference about the water concentration. So if it's hypotonic, less solutes, more water. If it's hypertonic, more solutes, less water. And we've said previously that water always moves down its gradient during osmosis. So water moves from high to low concentration. And that is why you see, well, it's a bad arrow, why the water is moving to the right in this U-shaped tube. Because water concentration is lower on the right, where it's hypertonic, and that is the direction water will move. So if you remember that water always moves towards the hypertonic, you will be okay. And you're going to see that through several examples. We'll, do, we'll look at it again here and then um, even in class. Um, sometimes everything's equal. And if everything is equal, we say that both sides of the membrane are isotonic. Solute concentration is equal on both sides of the membrane. This doesn't mean that water won't move. Water can still pass back and forth um, across the membrane, but it would move back and forth equally. There wouldn't be water moving more in one direction. Okay, so the net movement is zero. Water passes back and forth equally. There's going to be no change um, in the cell. If you remember that water always moves towards the hypertonic, you're going to be fine. Water moves towards the hypertonic, because that's where there is less water. If I go back to this picture, hypertonic, more solutes, less water. I see less blue. And that is the direction that water will move. So the hard part is going to be determining where is it hypertonic and where is it hypotonic. If you can determine that, you'll, you'll be able to tell me which way water moves and why. Um, looking at some examples, plasmolysis versus cytolysis. Uh, plasmolysis is when the cell loses water or it shrivels. So another way to say this is dehydration or to dehydrate the cell. It's losing water. It shrivels. So think about a scenario that would result in a cell losing water. Uh, what type of environment are you in if you lose water? Well, if you are losing water, you are in a hypertonic environment. And environment always refers to the outside of the cell. So if your environment is hypertonic relative to the interior of the cell, water will leave the cell and the cell will shrivel, it will dehydrate, it will undergo plasmolysis. The opposite of this would be cytolysis, when the cell gains water and swells or gets bigger. Um, it could eventually lyse, which means to burst. So if it gains too much water, it could burst. Okay, so conditions that would cause cytolysis would be a hypotonic environment. Environment, again, being the outside of the cell. Um, if the outside is hypotonic, that means the inside of the cell must be described as hypertonic. We know that water always moves towards the hypertonic. So water's moving into the cell and it's getting bigger, it's swelling. Okay, so there's a lot of situations that can cause plasmolysis and cytolysis. We're going to spend the next couple of days looking at examples and scenarios um, and you'll become very good at telling me what, what will happen to the cell in um, certain conditions.